I'll teach you how you can create a flash effect for your sprites in Unreal Engine 5. Color flashes like these are useful for 2D games of many different genres and can be used to indicate a character taking damage, being poisoned, burning or many other things. So I hope you understand how versatile and useful the system can be. There are a few different ways you could go about implementing the flash effect and I'll first mention the methods I ended up not using. The simplest and most obvious way is to just color in certain frames directly in your animation. This might work out in simple scenarios, but it lacks versatility and I wouldn't recommend it. Another way would be to simply create a second material that is only a single color and then switch out the materials for a few milliseconds whenever you want to use the effect. In the case of Unity, this seems to be the method most people use and it's also a valid solution for Unreal Engine. However, the method I like the most and I'm gonna teach in this video is adding the flash color directly to the sprite material. Creating a dynamic material instance in the blueprint and turning the flash on and off through the blueprint whenever I need to. Let's get started. For the demonstration I'll use my character blueprint, but all you need is a blueprint which has a sprite or flipper component. Click on the sprite and check the details panel to the right. Unless you've already created a custom material, you'll either be using the masked lit sprite material or masked unlit sprite material, depending on your needs. This method is gonna work for both of those. We'll first need to create a copy of their parent materials, so click on the folder icon to find them in the content browser. Select the default sprite material and default lit sprite material and drag them somewhere into your content folder. Select copy here. I'll rename the lit material to m underscore custom lit sprite and the unlit material to m underscore custom unlit sprite. Right click the lit material and create a material instance which will let us update parameters easier. I'll call it mi underscore custom lit sprite. Do the same thing for the unlit sprite and call it mi underscore custom unlit sprite. Let's open up m underscore custom lit sprite. We can drag these nodes to the left to create some space since we want to plug into the emissive color. Hold the 3 key on the keyboard and left click somewhere to create a vector 3 color. Open it up and set the saturation and value all the way to the top to create red. When connecting this to the emissive color, you can see that it will now kind of blend with the original texture. We don't want this color to be active all the time though, so we'll need a multiplier which we can adjust from our blueprints. Add a multiply node here and connect it to the emissive color. Then hold the 1 key on your keyboard and left click to create a float value. Connect this to B. By default this value is 0 which will basically disable the color altogether and should be the default state. To allow us to change this value from the blueprints, right click this node and convert it to a parameter. Call it flash multiplier. This name will be very important later on. Also right click on our color and convert it to a parameter. Call it flash color. Select all of these nodes, right click and collapse nodes. This will make everything more compact. Select the collapsed graph and copy it by right clicking or pressing Ctrl plus C. Then open up the unlit material. Press Ctrl plus V to paste our flash effect. As you can see the diffuse texture is already using the emissive color, so we can't just plug our flash effect in here. Instead drag off from the flash effect node and create an add node. Then connect the line which was originally in the emissive color to this add node and the output of the add node to emissive color. Now both of our materials are prepared and we can use them in the same way. Open up your blueprint and select the sprite or flipper component. For the material type in mi underscore custom. You should see the material instances of both of our custom materials. Pick either the lit or unlit one depending on your needs. I'll go with the custom lit sprite material instance. 
To turn this into a dynamic material, we need to open up the event graph and find begin play. Drag a reference to the sprite or flipbook in here and call create dynamic material instance on it. Make sure that the element index matches the index you see in the details panel. In this case, 0. Promote the return value to a variable called dynamic sprite mat. To quickly demonstrate how this works, let's just add a delay of 5 seconds here. On the dynamic sprite material, call set scalar parameter value. Set the value to 1.0. The parameter name needs to be the same we set in the material in the flash multiplier. When starting the game, you'll see that the flash color becomes active after the 5 second delay. You can actually also set the multiplier value to something like 10 to make the flash color stronger, if you'd like. Let's delete the delay and setting off the parameter value here. We need to create an event which lets us pick the flash color and multiplier value, sets them on the material and then slowly fades the multiplier out again. In the event graph right click and add a custom event. Call it trigger flash. Again grab a reference to the dynamic sprite material and call set scalar parameter value on it. The parameter name is again flash multiplier as we can see in the material. The value can just be dragged onto the event node to add a new pin. Rename it to multiplier and set the default value to 1.0. Get a reference to the dynamic sprite material again. This time call set vector parameter value. The parameter name should be our flash color. Connect the color value to trigger flash to add a pin. Rename this to color and set the default value to red by sliding the saturation and value all the way up. Just to demonstrate what this event does so far, go to begin play and add a delay node again. Then call trigger flash. You can see that we can now easily set the multiplier and color, but the color still stays active forever. Go back to the event and add a timeline. Call it flash multiplier. Open it up and create a flow track called alpha. Right click to create a new key. Set the time to 0 and the value to 1. Create another key with a time of 1 and a value of 0. You can click these arrow symbols to center the view and then zoom out even more with the mouse wheel. Adjust the length of the timeline to match and also be 1 second. You can then select all of the keyframes, right click and set key interpolation to auto to make the transition smoother. Go back to the event graph. We want to reuse the part where we set the scalar parameter, so copy it. And paste it here. Connect it to the update pin of the timeline. 
For the value, we want to use a lerp that smoothly goes from the A value to the B value. For the alpha, we use the alpha of our timeline. The B value should be the multiplier value we get as an output from the event. The A value needs to stay at 0. When playing the game, you can see that the flash is now working. However, we currently have no way of setting how long it takes to fade out and it's always one second. Move these nodes to the right to create some space. Right click and search for flash multiplier or whatever you call your timeline. Call set play rate on it. This is basically a multiplier for how fast we play the timeline. Drag the new rate value onto the flash multiplier node to create a new pin. Rename it to play rate and set the default value to 5. This means with the default value the fadeout will finish playing in 0.2 seconds. Now we can get rid of the delay and function called on begin play. You now want to find the place in your blueprints where you need to trigger the flashing. For example on any damage. Just call the event and set the values you want to use. And then you can see it in action. You can now easily add this to many different places in your blueprint and adjust the values to fit the situation. If you want to learn another technique to make your games feel much better, check out my video on how to implement hit stop. As always, thanks to my amazing patrons who support this channel.